Oh, plastic. And, uh, plastic. Oh, they, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> I was like, what? Oh my God. <laughs> no, they weren't literal. You know, there's another Jungian concept that I'd like to link this to. To I think we've been talking around it the whole time, but it's the idea of the trickster. Mm. And the trickster often revert, resorts to vulgarity. There are some wonderful trickster stories that involve, you know, shit and penises and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, in all of what we've been talking about with humor and uh, this idea about transgression or breaking the norms is all associated with trickster. And trickster energy can be in service to, uh, uh, you, you know, things that are less than uh, lofty, but but ultimately, the trickster plays this very deep function of renewal of the culture and is, is often in service to growth, both in personal life yeah. and in collective life. So I think that vulgarity is sort of maybe one of trickster's tools. Mm -hmm. So uh, an interesting... Um Example of that is, um, I don't know if you guys remember when there, um, that a, a group of Oregon self-organized militia folks took over a federal building. Was that in Oregon? Mm -hmm. This is something yeah, that happened so. uh, a while ago. And uh, there was a standoff. Sadly, one of them was killed um, as they started waving a gun. but. People started mailing them bags of dicks. That it was a thing, like bags of little penises that they kept uh, mailing to them. And they were getting boxes <laughs> and boxes of these things <laughs> as a way of kind of insulting them, as a kind of trickster um, expression. And there where was did, one where <laughs> kind were they of, getting these penises from? Yeah, whose well, penises? <laughs> well, like, apparently there is a cottage industry where you can buy little, uh, little uh, plastic penises by the hundreds. Oh, plastic! And, uh, plastic. Oh, they! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> I was like, what? Oh my God! <laughs> no, they weren't literal. I was like, I thought it was really <laughs> dark. Okay, little plastic penises. No, no, I'm no. There with you now. Yeah, uh, of course, calling them all dicks for doing this, but that's an example of too. that. Little dicks, um, of this trickster, um, and that the, for whatever reason, the post office was still allowed to deliver things, even yeah. though there was like a standoff with guns. And so there was this uh, moment where the leader of the group was um, was doing a little bit of a video message to the public, and he brings it up and he goes. And those of you that keep, you know, mailing us boxes of dicks, don't waste your time. But the whole thing was so wildly absurd and strange mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. would be something that would be inserted into this life-threatening um, and, and politically dangerous situation. That's trickster. But... And it also brings in an element of how uh, vulgarity can be used as an instrument of contempt. Oh, okay. uh, to yep. uh, to mm -hmm. really demean, yeah, um, and uh, humiliate. Uh, in this case, these uh, these people of you know, you're just a bunch of little dicks. Um, it seems like it didn't really succeed, but. Uh, Vulgarity uh, is often used to put people down. Mm -hmm. It's a form of satire. That's yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Something that you had were saying earlier, Deb, is that there is something particularly about um, vulgar language as an emotional outlet that actually changes neurochemistry. And this is something that we probably have all experienced when we've hurt ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, that if you and I've done this. I, I broke my little toe once. It was really awful. I 
I was walking barefoot. I hit the corner of a couch. I heard a sound that sounded like a carrot being broken. And I was like, fuck. Oh Holy God! <laughs> See, we're doing it right now, right? Ah. We're all there. Yes. I looked out, and my my little toe was like at a ninety degree angle, oh, no. and that was the first one. I was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> it was so. And and the interesting thing mm. is that studies have shown yes. that swearing in a moment like that actually increases pain tolerance, and is an effort <laughs> at emotional <laughs> regulation. That's. That's I did. Amazing. It was gruesome, but uh, I have to say that I did pack ice on it immediately, numbed it out, and then this wonderful resident at the ER put it back in place. So it was a clean break. Ugh. But that, but it was the ah. the carrot the carrot sound. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, you got me. <laughs> you can stop now. I got the picture. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, but isn't that a great example of a little bit of vulgarity there? Of of and imagine this toe like a carrot breaking. It's like, ooh, dragging us into something kind of awful. But we're sitting here safely, so it's okay. Oh. Um, and this is um, an example of what it's like to sit next to Joseph at a meeting when you really <laughs> want to be serious. So, so now the next time we're together, I'll have a bag of carrots and I'll, I'll bite them in a crunchy way and then stare at you <laughs> when you least expect it. Yeah. <laughs> so another um, dimension, I think, of vulgarity, profanity, obscenity, um, has to do with psychological ambivalence. That people have mm. very ambivalent feelings towards vulgarity, for instance, that they are mm -hmm. simultaneously attracted to the emotional expressiveness and humor, and at the same time they can be repelled by its potential to offend or to violate social mm -hmm. norms. Mm. And that we, we have both of those feelings in us. And that's why, you know, we can go to, again, I love David, Dave Chappelle. So you're listening to Dave Chappelle and he's, his timing, the way he's introducing something mm -hmm. is so outrageous. Everyone's laughing. But then the three of us could sit here and look at the same topic and suddenly it's not funny at all. Uh, yeah. And that we yeah. have, we're able to hold both of those tensions inside of us, um, which I think is, is important um, and challenging, which is why I think humor, as you were saying earlier, can be a kind yeah. of dangerous game because the dial is moving all the time. But there is something, and I think that's a great point, that it's about ambivalence, and there's a way that we might find ourselves laughing at something and not even wanting to find it funny. You know, we're sort of being, like, mm -hmm. dragged across the line and being shown yeah. for the little, you know, potty, potty-mouthed potty person that we are or whatever when someone, you know, cracks a fart joke and we're, we're, we're trying to act sophisticated, but we can't help it. We just crack up. Um. But so I, I, I like I like ambivalence, but I, I think there's something important here about um, I, I just am really distrustful of anyone who can't uh, find something humorous. There's some there's something psychological going on when we always revert to offense and we can't mm. we can't roll have a good roll in the mud, you know. Mm -hmm. There's some, there's something that the, the psyche is too rigid. And that again, that goes to the role of the trickster. The role of the trickster is to, uh, to, to, to break apart something that's gotten overly yeah. rigid. And I, I think vulgarity of the topic that we've been talking about today is absolutely a part of that, that, you know, that, that our ego or persona perhaps has gotten too crusty. And vulgarity invites us to kind of get get down in the mud a little bit, you know, and that, that there's something really healthy about that. 
I think that that has something to do with the inability to transcend shame and anger. Because taking offense, when someone is chronically claiming being offended, there is both a sense of shame that's being moved from the individual Mm -hmm. onto the other person and shames them for doing it. And it's also an opportunity to express anger and aggression. So if one is is invested with anger, aggression, and shame, then that is not an environment where humor or laughter can easily exist. They Mm -hmm. They don't generally go together because humor would pop you right out of shame and rage because you're kind of giggling all of a sudden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some people can get, as you were saying, really trapped in that kind of pain and misery. Yeah. So in a way, the ultimate um, attribute of vulgarity is its ability to help us transcend uh, the usual norms. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, whether it's something like shame or anger or um, propriety or a hundred other things, that it's a very lowness and appeal to bodily functions and and, and other kind of body uh, fundamentals of human existence. That is also transcendence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 